church is about to be persecuted. We're starting to see it. Rejoice. In fact, I'll, I'll even start right there. The church is being is being persecuted. It's almost like you, you can't say anything about any other religion without getting your hand slapped. But you say something about Christianity and you're almost congratulated. And no matter what we do in, in defense, it just seems like, oh, there they go again. And, and I will say, you know, the church didn't do itself any favors in the last couple hundred years. <laughs> we were the hand slappers. The world has gone crazy. Where right is wrong, and wrong is right, and Crystal and I will be looking at at, at the uh, headlines, looking at some of the, the popular ideas out there, and we'll be going, is, is no one else seeing this? We still have a Ukraine-Russia war. That's still raging, you realize that? And yet we don't hear much about it. If you were in the Ukraine, you'd be hearing a lot about it. There's still lots of bombing. There's still lots of, of murders and rapes and, and terrible things that are going on in Russia. Of course, the highlight and the spotlight is the Middle East and that mean old Israel. You know, we, we, we look at the rhetoric, and I say that facetiously. The whole world seems to be against Israel. And yet, no other country has ever dropped pamphlets on a city saying, we're going to bomb it because you're bad people. There are bad people here. No one, no one does that. They've made thousands of phone calls do you realize this? Thousands of phone calls in, into the areas that they were about to bomb. To see, we're, we're coming. We have no choice because the bad guys are trying to kill us. And if we don't get them, they're, they're going to. And Crystal and I have been sitting there look, look, listening to the rhetoric on national news. I'm going to say this publicly, I've had to turn off CBC. Because the rhetoric is just, and, and, and we, we just feel like we're always looking around going, are we crazy? Are, are, we, are people really buying this stuff? All of the protests, the, the you know, free, free Palestine, you know that the, the expression from the from the river to the sea is about the uh, Palestine will be free. That's about the annihilation of the Jews. That's what that means. And you have these college and university students that are out there screaming it. These these women that don't have their head coverings on, that are out there marching it. I'll tell you what. They're not friends of Hamas. They're not friends of... The, we, have, we have gay people saying, free Palestine. Whether you're Hamas or not, they will kill you. And we're, look, we're listening, we're going, the world's gone crazy. How in the world is right wrong and wrong right and people are so misinformed and we're, and we're taking a step back going I, I can't believe that the masses are eating this up you have the US elections that are absolutely going crazy I made the mistake this week of listening to one of the Trump rallies and listen to him go on for an hour and a bit but, he, but the one thing is, he's very honest. <laughs> he's very honest about the things that are going on. I shouldn't say I made the mistake of, I'm not making a political statement either, or I'm just saying one of the things that he does say 
is we're, is the U.S. is extremely sick right now, and the rest of the world are laughing at them. Wow. The superpower of the world is being laughed at. Other countries are bombing and killing U.S. military with no response. You sit back and go, is this really happening? Who knows, we need to pray for November. Us being the 51st state. <laughs> yeah. But we need to pray for our own elections at the same time. I don't even know. You know, the scripture says you don't know how to pray. You're right, Lord. When it comes to the, these elections, I don't know how to pray. Look at the high prices that we're paying. But it's the high prices on the necessities. Have you noticed that? When we were doing the, the, the going through Revelation last week, that was the one thing that I noticed about the third horseman who's riding with the scales, and and he says, two days' wages for a loaf of bread. That's price gouging. And then, but don't don't harm the oil and the wine. In other words, the rich just keep getting richer. But then you notice that the references are about food. That hit me between the eyes last week. And and grocery store owners, billionaires, have been taken to task by the, our government to say, what's going on here? And the rhetoric, the rhetoric, the rhetoric, and they just go back to their mansions and don't do anything. The prices are still going up. Two days wages for a loaf of bread. He seems to know what to do about it. We're not blaming COVID anymore. We're not blaming the, uh, the uh, um, oh gosh, the uh, supply chain anymore. I mean, there was the big Suez Canal that bunged up there for a while, and it was like, oh, everything's going to go up. But now there's no reason, and nobody's going, nobody's even looking for a reason anymore. It's gone crazy. The whole thing in the states, in particular, about abortion is is just gone. You know that now that it's gone to to from a federal decision to the states, some of the states are wanting abortion after birth, where the boy the baby's born. And the doctor and mother go into the other room and say, what are we going to do about this? That, that's happening. I'm not making this up. That's happening. Pornography. I was listening to a podcast about the, um, the scandal on one of the biggest pornography sites called Pornhub. And how they were they were saying that underage children could be viewed there but now it's new ownership and the new owners are saying no photo ID for everyone who's who's on one of the videos there and I think they said they get 10 billion views a week and so they're talking about you know no we, we put regulations together and we're doing the best well do you know what if they get fined they're making a lot of money. Here's your fun. Here you go. Sorry about that. And as I was listening to this, realizing that the internet that has no borders and has very little regulation, because if you find all the big guys, then all these little creepy guys all of a sudden start doing their pornography and they start making the money. And they're harder to regulate because they're all in their closets. And, and all of a sudden, and then they, right at the end, they said, the one, one thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that young children are able to access it. Whereas when I was growing up, if your buddy's dad left his Playboy out, that was, that was a, as accessible as it got. But now, pull out the phone, anyone, at any age, pull out the phone. We have kids addicted to pornography by age 9 and 10. 
And it all of a sudden occurred to me why, I think it's just the frog boiling in the water, that we will never be, we will never have a pornography free society ever again. Never. Because you can't stop it and you can't regulate it. So now what the education system is starting to do is say, do you know what? They don't say we can't get rid of it, but now they're, they're saying, we need to just teach people how to use it safely. <laughs> the world's gone crazy. I'm going somewhere with this, by the way. We have battles against races and skin color. We have battles against genders. We have people deciding what gender they are based on feelings. And I, the only thing I'm going to say about that, and, and my heart goes out to them. Because that would be extremely confusing, extremely painful to, to deny your feelings for same sex. I, I, I truly, that goes out. My heart goes out to them. But no matter what you chop off or staple on your body, you're still going to be an XX or an XY chromosome. That doesn't change. Hormones may change. You can change those levels. You know that we're, we're giving hormone therapy to like 12 and 13 year olds. Can I talk about, it? so my Lily came up and said, well, and she was I think 11 at the time, said I've decided I'm a lesbian. And I said to Crystal, well 11 year old, of course that's the choice because of what she's choice. Boys are icky <laughs> at 11 years old. Get, get into to that mindset. Boys are icky, and I get along with my girlfriends really, really well. But if we sat her down and told her what a lesbian does that makes them a lesbian, it's not living together. It's not holding hands. It's not, it's not liking the company of women more than men. None of that makes you a lesbian. It's the sex act. And if we told her that, she would go, oh, I'm not. <laughs> but the rhetoric that's out there, battles against men, there's, there's battles against churches. There's churches become big business. And I personally am starting to get rattled with the Sunday morning rock concert. Part of me, you know, loves to see the passion and the and the ex, and the excitement towards Jesus and young people and young adults in particular going, yeah, you know, we come together in the name of Jesus. I love that, but my prayer is that it will be about Jesus. And 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 you, you still have these siloed churches that without saying anything are battling against one another and the world is watching and laughing. And what's amazing about everything that I just said is we have this thing called social media that drives it all. COVID, first pandemic with social media, what a chaotic show that was. Oh, I got, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Social media drives it all. Do you know it's a proven fact that the Middle East war, the rhetoric of Israel and the Palestines is being driven by Hamas on TikTok? It's proven. It's being driven by TikTok. And so your kids that have TikTok, no wonder they're going out and going, Israel's a bunch of murderers. 
Moss is telling them that through a fun TikTok video with influencers. Anybody can be an influencer now. And the rhetoric is being controlled by social media. <laughs> right is wrong and wrong is right. Are you ready to turn to your Bibles? Turn to John chapter 14. Watch this. I, I, we're we're going we're gonna to be washed with the word. I just filled you with dirt and garbage. And watch this. I'm going to wash you with the word, which is really why we're here, right? And I did it deliberately. Because the darker it is, the lighter the light shines. And the dirtier it is, when you see a white, a pure white patch, how white is that? Here's your light. Here's your white patch. John chapter 14, verse 27. Ah, it's Jesus speaking to us. Jesus speak to us this morning. John chapter 14, verse 27. Let's be washed with this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Be washed with that. I'm going to go to the Old Testament quick and I'm going to just say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and give you and give you peace. Peace is a gift from God and wars and rumors of wars wars and rumors of wars and, and the price gouging and, and the murders and the crazy ideas about gender and race and, and, and the education system and abortion and all the rest of it I want to tell you that if you are walking with Jesus None of that should take your peace. Because right. if your peace is gone, you're going to start reacting. If your peace is gone, you're going to start. What's the opposite of peace? Fear. Anxiety. Depression. Restlessness. We're sparking on all cylinders. The, the people, the world is, is just sparking. They're just sparking. There's no peace. There's no peace. We've got to keep on going. We've got to keep on. We've got to do something about this. We've got to do something about that. You're so concerned about the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict, and yet you're not a general in the army. Well, what are you going to do about it? Peace. 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 Peace be still. Peace be still. I am here to tell you that peace is a gift and I want you to protect that peace with everything that you got. Because it's not the peace of the world. Jesus said very clearly, I do not give to you as the world gives. He goes beyond your mind that's going crazy. You need to take every thought captive. Paul says that to the Corinthians in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And you need to find, go beyond that. And where does Jesus give you the peace? Way down deep. So down deep that you have to, you have to learn how to stop. Maybe first thing in the morning. I love, I love how, how Stan... You know, he's, he's, he sets up his routine that as soon as his eyes are open, he pulls out the word. Before there's any radio turned on, before there's any scrolling through phones, before the phone is answered, hey, can you get this to here? Can you do that for me? Before he looks out the window and sees all the chores that he needs to do. 
he comes to the word and he feeds. Some of you get up and, and, you, and, you, and you're going with starving spirits. That just comes to me right now. You're, if you got up and didn't eat your breakfast and you just went about your day, all of a sudden, you're going to be going, I, gotta, I forgot to eat. I got to eat something. And yet we do that to our spirit often. But our body masks it and we just keep on going. But when your spirit hasn't fed first thing in the morning and you haven't stopped and what I was getting at is Jesus puts that peace so deep into your spirit that you need to be still and know daily. Be still and know. My backyard is my be still and know. As soon as I get up, no matter what the temperature is, I'll, I'll dress accordingly. I'm out the back and I just look and listen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, whatever my hand finds to do, please bless it. I will do it with all my might. Let the peace that passes all understanding guard my heart. This is a discipline. But that peace has been given to you. You don't have to find it. You don't have to earn it. Jesus said before he went on the cross, which is John 14, our text, peace I give to you. Peace I give to you. And lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The gift of peace. This again was inspired by Crystal's podcast. If you haven't heard it, you need to go watch the rest of this one first. And then, and then right away, you need to go and watch Crystal's podcast on protecting your peace. Peace is a gift. You can have a big house and a nice vehicle and, and, and your paychecks are just a-flowing. But if you don't have peace, it's all nothing it's all garbage it's not and that stuff won't give you peace remember whenever whenever in my former church when i take up the offering i'd say you know one of the things you need to be you need to establish is if money ties you up you want peace in your life take that money and give it to god and say no no you're that's not my protection that's not my provision and that's not my peace well, I'd have peace if I had $3,000 in my bank account. If I had 20000 even if I had zero and I wasn't running in bank line, I'd have peace. No. The Apostle Paul said it great. I've learned the secret of being content. Oh, we could use some contentment, couldn't we? I had plenty. I had nothing. And I've learned to be content no matter what. Learning to be content. Learning daily to grab that peace and don't let anything rock you or shake you. I'm going to use you again. Stan, that's okay. I was talking to him on the phone first thing in the morning. I was heading to Kingsville. He was heading to, to uh, his place. And, and he, he's been doing some deliveries. And all of a sudden, he went, Oh, I forgot my paperwork. It took about three minutes. He lost his peace. Tell on the phone. Lost his peace, but three minutes later, he had his peace back. No, 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 no. Paperwork is not gonna, you know the things that we, it's those little things. Oh, should it, it's a Song of Solomon that talks about the fox that spoils the vines. And you know what? The, it starts by saying, Spirit, you take care of the foxes that spoil the vine. So it's not even you that's chasing the foxes away. Your job is to fix your eyes on Jesus, to fix your eyes on the Holy Spirit, and then He takes care of the foxes. We're too busy in life taking care of foxes. Oh, that whore. 
oh that war, oh that comment, oh my, oh my paperwork, and we're chasing the foxes away, and it's no, Holy Spirit, fill me. Give me the peace that passes all understanding, yeah. and you chase away the foxes. This is a great life if, if we can, this is a life more abundant. Oh, isn't that what Jesus said for us? He didn't want to just give us life. He wanted to give us life more abundant. That's not more money. That's not a bigger house. That's not a bigger car. Right. All those things you can have and still not have life more abundant. But peace I give you in plenty and in wants. When your kids obey, when they don't obey, when, when, there's, when the social media, you know, the feed was happy this morning, when it wasn't happy this morning, when I'm feeling good today, and I'm not, I'm not feeling good today, when I'm treated well today, when I'm not treated well today, that's like the, the one who's been shaken by the waves and you can't stand still. Jesus, if, but if you have his peace, that's it, peace. We need to protect our peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. I love that. He's the, the Prince of Chatham, the Prince of America, the, the Prince of Blenheim, the Prince, they're all locations, they're all areas, right? The Prince of Peace, come. Come to my city, it's called Peace. And I'm the Prince of it. Isn't that beautiful? Come live. Come live in my country. We are ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, the Bible the New Testament says. An ambassador is one that lives in another country, but is from a, a different country. We don't live here. This is not our home. And the more you try to make this your home and put your talons in the ground, and have that perfect life, that perfect home that you're hoping for and praying for, the more you set yourself up for everything opposite of peace, fear, anxiety, depression, restlessness. Look at our marriages. Restless. Restless. Everybody's, you know, we were, we were talking about all the people that have gone off to, to greener pastures. Because there's no you're expecting peace in your marriage. You don't even have peace in yourself. You're expecting peace in your children, but you're, you have no peace in yourself. You're in peace with your neighbors, but you, there's a war going on inside of you. What are you expecting to happen, happen around you? Protect your peace. Here's the other one. Keep the peace. There's lots to say. And there's lots of platforms and formats to say it. Keep the peace. Blessed, Jesus said in the, on the Sermon on the Mount, in what, what is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers. You have to make it. It won't just happen naturally. You have to make it. Blessed are the peacemakers. Listen to this, for they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. I'll have some of that, thank you. I'll have some of that. If people don't see a difference in you, in the way you react, why would they ever take on the disciplines of Christianity? It's when all hell is breaking loose. But not in you. The people go, I need, I, I want that. I need that. What is that? And you can tell them not what it is, but who it is. That's when Christianity becomes so attractive. Crystal on her podcast talks about, I'm going to steal one thing from you, talks about an atheist, 
and she showed me this this what what, what platform was that on? TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> the Christian side. Of it. <laughs> the Christian side of TikTok. <laughs> and so she was an atheist who'd become a Christian, born again Christian, and I believe this is how. She would wake up in the morning as an atheist and say her objective was to rattle a Christian's cages. And so she would put stuff on TikTok to make Christians mad. And it would only take one Christian to say, how dare you? And she'd go, yes. That was her objective. And you can imagine there's, there's thousands of maybe millions of other people that are their objective it's not by default that they that they tick off a christian it's their objective and if they can get under the skin of a christian they go yes but it was those that she could not trip their trigger no matter what she said the christian would always come back and and with a with a with a kind word I think that's in the Bible, right, Joel? A kind word turns away wrath. And she encountered enough Christians that would not hand their peace over to her. Even though she was trying to take it, she went, I, I need some of that. And now she's, and when, you know, when she's explaining this and how, what the Lord has done, she starts getting emotional. Because she was living in such turmoil, the only way that she could get any peace was to bring someone else into that turmoil. Especially some, someone, like a Christian, who said that they lived in peace. Instead, it was the ones that would nod him, I will not give you my peace. I will not give you my peace. You can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. And don't we have the best example of that? Jesus is in front of Pilate and, the, and all, of the, all of the priests, high priest and the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They're all shouting accusations at him. And Jesus is just... Pilate says, don't you know? Don't you, don't you hear them? Don't you know that I have the power to execute you? And it was at that that Jesus went. He still held his peace, but he went, hold on. Correction. You would have no power over me if it was not given to you. And then he held his peace. He held his peace. Who was in the most powerful position in that scenario? Jesus. Yes. Who looked like the doormat? Jesus. What perspective matters more to you? The momentary perspective or God's eternal perspective? Keep the peace. Keep the peace. And let's take Jesus' as an example. My last point is hold your peace. Shh. Isn't it amazing? I've said this for many years. Isn't it amazing how we read something and we click on comment? Because I just can't let that go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna write a comment. And I'm going to put this point in it, and this point in it, and this point. I'm going to reread it. I'm going to give it to somebody else to proofread. I'm going to go through all the, and, and we're going to, and we really feel like we're going to have this watertight comment that the person who originally posted it's going to read and go, oh, yeah. I, I see it so clearly now. No, no, no. Debate will never work especially on, on the, in writing on social media. Debate will not work. 
never. But a kind word will turn away your wrath. And sometimes, and this is my point here, no word at all. Don't you hear them? Jesus, don't you hear them? Don't you hear them? Jesus could have said, what a stupid question. I'm in the same room. Of course I hear them. But he protected his peace. He kept the peace. And he held the peace. And boy, we could learn a big lesson there. There is the other side of the coin that sometimes silence means permission or silence means uh, agreement. I understand that. But that's why, this is the part I love about every message. Every sermon that I've ever preached, and this actually just came to me but within the year, every sermon that I ever preached comes down to this. If you're not walking with the Holy Spirit, you'll never pull it off. You need his discernment. You need his balance. What to say, what not to say. Where to, where to go, where not to go. If you're not walking with God, which is the design of this whole science project, was for you to walk with God right from the first page of your Bible. It's clear. God wants to walk with his image. And we keep straight arming him. The end of every message is, if you're not walking with God, you will never be successful in keeping your peace. But if you are walking with God, you absolutely can. Protect it, keep it, and in many cases, hold your peace. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray right now for everyone who has heard this. I pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. That they, that we all would be able to function in the peace that you gave us. Forgive us for squandering that gift. A gift is a gift and we don't want to ever want to hand it back or put it to the side. We want and need more than ever that gift of peace. Thank you for giving it to us. And now, Lord, we receive the counselor, the comforter, so that we can walk in it. And have life more abundantly in a world that's absolutely gone loony. We guard our peace. Be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we present our request to you, Lord. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in you, Jesus.